So I'm outside of Cleveland today at the Hinckley Reservation and um, hiking this beautiful area along these sandstone formations here known as the ledges, also known as the Worden's ledges. But what makes this place really interesting is way back in the 1940s, a man named Noble Stewart spent some time back here carving all kinds of pictures and faces into this sandstone. So I'm currently looking for it. Oh yeah, here you go. Boy, they really jump out of you once you see them. Look at that face. Now this is a picture of Ty Cobb. You can see it says Cobb, C-O-B-B, -B, right there. Now from what I've read, Noble and Ty Cobb were old fishing buddies, great friends. So that would explain why he carved him into the rock. No doubt his favorite baseball player too. So there's supposed to be all different kinds. There's even a big sphinx carving out here somewhere. I'm just not exactly sure. They're kind of all hidden, but almost hidden in plain sight too. Oh yeah, right up here you can see a cross and what looks like a Bible below it. it. Looks like there's some initials. Can't really make them out. I'm not sure if they were original to the design. So some quick background. Uh, this land at one time was all owned by a man named Frank Worden, which is where Worden Ledges comes from. This man, Noble Stewart, married his daughter and lived on the property for a bunch of years. And all of these carvings are significant to either people he knew or historical figures. Look, here's one right here. They really just jump out at you once you see them. Just weird faces in the rocks. See this name, Nettie, Noble Stewart's wife. You really have to look for these things. Um, but as you walk along, keep looking. Eventually, you will find some. Now look at this. H.M. Worden, 1851. Now I think what that is is H.M. Worden was the son, was Frank Worden's son, who was then the brother-in-law of Noble Stewart. And I think he was born in 1851. So I think that's why that date is there. I don't believe that these are that old. I don't believe they were from the 1800s, but no one's completely sure. So I could be wrong about that. And here you go, this is some sort of a, a ship. It looks like either a, some sort of a ship. Some people say that um, Noble carved this into it because his father was killed uh, in a shipwreck on the Great Lakes. Uh, we're not totally sure, no one's totally sure, but that could be the significance of that boat. And as I'm sitting here talking to you, I look up 
And there's a face right there. I'm not sure who that is, but it's way up on that ridge. Oh, here you go. Here is the Sphinx. Look at that carving. Pretty creepy. In its own way. Now, I have no idea how long these things took him to, to create, um, but like I said, it's, uh, it's widely assumed that he did this stuff in the mid to late 1940s. You can see how beautiful it is in this area. This was a common area for the Worden family to come and picnic. Obviously because of how tranquil it is here. Found this one it says, I, I believe it says gate post out, gate post out 1852. You tell me if you think you see something different, but I think it says eight, gate post out 1852. Not sure what that means. I don't know how many there are out here um, and I've lost count how many I've found. I think I read 13, but then there's also people that say every time they come here, they find a new one. So it's hard to say. You can see that a lot of the rock has this weathered look to it, this weathered look to it, all these little craters carved into it by the wind and the weather. I mean, obviously it looks like somebody carved a peace sign into this, but I doubt this was Noble Stewart, but think about how old this is, that it's really starting to cave in in its own, its own way and it's it's obviously been here for some years. So although some people have come here and carved their own name into these sandstones, 100 years from now, people will be looking at that saying, wow, 2019. And that actually makes me think, when this was done in the 1940s, did people look at this as graffiti back then, as just defacing nature and carving your name or a face on a rock? Who knows? This final one that I found is really more of a statue and it's up at the trailhead where you would park if you come here. It's, it's right near where the original house was, the Worden house, and the barn. I believe that the house and everything was uh, leveled not too long ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, probably because it was falling apart. But uh, this one sits right on the ground here and it is obviously Jesus on the cross. The open Bible says is all so it will be interesting to see how long these things are around for. I mean, that sandstone just keeps weathering away. So maybe in 100 years, this stuff won't be here. Or maybe there will be the newer names left only. Who knows? 
But uh, I'm glad I checked it out. It was, ver it was very interesting here. And uh, hey, if you haven't already, definitely check out my second channel, Mobile Instinct 2. I post a lot of other odd and interesting and weird places there. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.